Hello there, Five Nine Trainers, and welcome back. Today we are here to talk about some brand new news coming out of the Pokemon Trading Card Game Online. We have a brand new thing coming out. It's called Pokemon Trading Card Game Live. A small, small difference. You want to explain what that is, Gail? Yes. So basically, there's been suggestions that they've been planning on work. Uh, you know, changing up the online scene for time. I think it was in the last year. I remember. Towards the end of the year, they were talking about, uh, or rumors were flying around that, you know, there was an updated version of Trading Card Game Online coming out. And lo and behold, here we are. There is a new version of uh, Trading Card Game Online. It's a completely different experience. Um, it's going to have its open beta later this year for PC and Mac and a soft launch on, in Canada, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and it's going to be a completely different thing. So you're going to have to, you know, re-log in with your trainer account. It's going to be a completely new experience. There's, it's completely updated UI and a lot of stuff. It looks very interesting. Uh, but Waffles, shall we get into some of the details that we know about the game so far? Yeah, I think so. But since we did mention logging in with your trainer account and this being a brand new thing, I want to start off by just quickly giving the disclaimer that all of your cards, your entire collection will be ported over when you log in. That's going to be really, really important. So do not worry about losing your cards. They will come with you. Yeah. So one thing I will also say as well, uh, on top of that, we'll talk a bit about the uh, sets available in the game. So at launch, there is only going to be sets available up until Lost Thunder. So anything before that is going to be unplayable until future updates. They have come out and said it in, on their website as well as Serebii has reported on it as well. So if you're planning on, you know, playing with some cards from like the Sinnoh or Gen 4 era or Gen 3 era, you're going to have to wait for a bit. Uh, it'll be in a future ex expansion. How do you feel about that, Waffles? Do you think that's fair? Do you think that maybe they should have had it from launch considering it's already available in TCG Online? Maybe. Uh, no, are they, no. Are, are, do I you think... think do you think it's there? They're, they're, they just rushed this maybe potentially as a result. No, I think I'm okay with them starting off simplified. I mean, this is mm -hmm. launching expanded format with all of those cards from Gen 4 and Gen 5 and even Gen 6 at some point. So it's like, that's going to be a lot. So to try to ask the Pokemon company to do that with a brand new game that they're launching, I would rather them get the launch right and then us get expanded a little bit later. Mm -hmm. So I think that that is A-OK -okay with me. Uh, just the fact that we are going to get it later makes this fine. I think if they had said, no, we're not bringing it at all, Here's those cards, you're just out of luck, just go go away, don't worry about them, I would be a little bit upset. But I think with this, I can be a little bit patient. How about you? No, I 100% agree. I think it's fine, you know, um, especially with how, you know, I'll, I'll be very frank and say this, you know, having played the TCG since I was a kid, when I say play, I mean collecting the cards very, uh, you know. Oh, I think we all did. I think the one thing that we would all agree on is that we didn't know how to play the actual TCG. Like, it was impossible for us to do. So, I will agree, like, for a lot of starting players and everything, you know, people who want to get into the TCG scene, I think it's a good way to go about it more, a bit more simplified. Even though arguably off late with the cards they've been releasing and stuff, it is still a bit complicated. Uh, but, you know, still, it's hopefully oh, yeah. going to be a bit more fun. A little bit more accessible you know people don't have to worry about trying to collect everything in the game when there's a limited amount available at launch and uh you know let's talk about actually collecting the cards right in the game so oh, yeah. let, let's talk a bit about the currency the uh, battle pass as well by the way there is a battle pass in the game and yes whether there's going to be in-app purchases so let's get that first and for uh, yeah. first and foremost out of the way no in-app purchases this is going to be completely like tcg online where you don't have to make a single purchase purchase however there is currencies in the game waffles you want to explain some of them yes you're going to have three different types and i do not have the names in front of me but essentially one of them is going to be i believe coins that you yes. get whenever you get a fourth dupe or fifth dupe sorry fifth dupe of a card essentially you can use those coins to buy single cards from the game so one of the things that everyone's kind of excited about right now is that you do not have to rely on rng anymore but while there are still packs in the game you are able to specifically just buy cards that you want with those coins that you earned from the game so that's going to be the first big change from the tcg online in a tcg online you can't just buy singles you have to trade but another thing that we're going to get into in a little bit is that there is no player to player trading in this. Mm -hmm. But we'll get into that a little bit later. That's just tangent off that point. Yeah, I agree. Um, obviously, I think that is credits you were referring to, by the way. Credits, coins, thank you. Yeah, coins is basically also in the game, but that is the other currency in the game. 
Um, but that's mainly for apparels and emotes for your avatars and customization like your sleeves and deck, deck sleeves. boxes. Yep, yeah, deck sleeves as well. So pretty much that's coins. And then finally, there's crystals. Now, crystals is actually going to be uh, the meat and potatoes uh, alongside credits because crystals is basically used for you to spend on the battle pass or they can be exchanged in the shop for booster packs or special bundles that can be converted into coins, basically. So effectively, crystals and credits are going to be the ones you mainly focus on with coins being something for more of an aesthetic purpose, right? That's the main thing I think we want to clarify here. And all of it is obtainable within the game. There is no in-app purchases. We pretty much have to repeat that, I think, so that, yeah. you know, uh, it, you know, a lot of people would assume like, oh, you know, you see a game and it's in- in-app purchase. I have to spend to do it. Well, but I no. mean, you've got lots of other games like that with Hearthstone, Dual Links and stuff that they True. want you to wail out on the game. Yes. There is no way except mm. by buying in-person packs and getting the code cards that you can wail on this game. Yep. They are very, very restrictive here. There's a very young audience compared to some of the other card games for Pokemon trading card mm-hmm. game online. Agreed. So I think they are really self-conscious of that. Yes. And let's talk a bit about code cards. With code cards still being a thing, I don't think the market value of code cards will decrease. If you look at any website, I think we should talk about this, you know, is that code cards are super dirt cheap, arguably, right? You can get a more a very recent set code card for like 30, 50 cents, basically. Um so it's not really that bad if you are interested in of course you know trying to collect everything within this digital world and you know potentially go through this digital experience more than the you know hard physical copy kind of experience you've got you've got code cards still being a thing so let's talk a bit about the uh let's talk a bit about the uh, updated ui how do you find how well, do you before find we get into that oh, wait wait wait, wait. i think okay, we, we got to talk a little bit more about the currency first because yeah. one thing i really want to point out here with the crystals specifically mm-hmm. and something that you can kind of prepare for i think what's the crystals no no sorry the uh the other one the one that you can actually buy single cards with credits since you get those from credits thank you since you can get those from getting duplicates of pokemon and since your collection is being imported before this gets launched, which we don't know when it's going to get launched yet, there's no set date, but before it gets launched, you should be trading for excess copies of some of the like uh, maybe common cards or rare cards. Whatever you can get mm-hmm. to put you over that four amount is going to instantly be converted into these credits when you log into this bird. So if you want to prepare for this game, that is something I would highly recommend any players to do before they this actually launches. So that's one thing I wanted to point out. The second thing with the code card is that, yeah, I think that you're right. The market value is going to decrease slightly just because you can't actually trade the packs. Like yes. the one bonus about the code cards that we haven't really pointed out yet is that in the Pokemon trading card game online, you have two different types of cards or packs or anything like that. You have locked and unlocked and unlocked cards are able to be traded on the marketplace. Same thing with packs. And whenever you get code cards because you paid for those they are considered unlocked so that's one of the really only ways you're able to get these unlocked packs outside of tournaments in game that can then be traded for other stuff so you'll probably see that price of code cards going down Uh, those were really the two points i wanted to hit though if you have anything to come back with on that before we go to the ui no i think uh no i think before we go into the ui you mentioned tournaments right so let's talk a bit about the matchmaking and stuff before we jump into the ui and whatnot so in this game there is going to be ranked and casual play modes of course in Mm -hmm. tcg online there was no ranked basically so i wanted to Uh, there was wasn't there there ranked I there was a was c- competitive one, right? Yeah, there, there was the climb? tournaments. There was the tournaments, but there was no okay. like ranked system. There was no like, oh, tiers and everything. I'm pretty sure there wasn't. I oh, could, yeah. I okay. could stand corrected, but it seems like there's going to be tiers and stuff in this game. So my question to you is, of course, with the pandemic and everything, you know, are they planning on switching to more of a digital uh, focus for maybe the actual competitions now with uh, obviously introducing TCG Live? I could see it as a possible option. I mean, you have things like, the first thing that comes to mind for me is Duel Links, where you have those in-person games with like Yu-Gi-Oh, but you also do have like, uh, was it Kaiba Cup or something like that is what they call it in Duel Links? KC Cup, yeah. The KC Cup, where basically people can fight against each other online and actually go into world tournaments with it. So I think that that is 
probably going to be another option. I don't know if it'll become their default because I think that those in-person games with the commentary is a big staple of the TCG. Yes, I agree. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about the UI now. I think that was pretty much the focus I wanted to point towards, which I'm excited for. I'm looking forward to doing some ranked matches, you know, uh, on my own uh, or potentially on stream. So it's going to be a lot of fun. But let's talk about the UI. I personally, you know, based on what little we've seen, of course, we have the pre-release screenshots. Thanks to, you know, Cerebi. Big shout outs to them for obviously collating all of this stuff always. I personally see a... I mean, they've basically taken the same UI. It looks very similar at its core. But at the same time, it's a lot more cleaner as well, right? Because I think the one mm -hmm. thing you were mentioning before we started recording is that you found the UI very clunky, right? Um, so yeah. yeah, how do you feel about this now? Because I still, I see the similarities. I see the similarities, but I can see also where you, you what you mean by it's a lot cleaner than the original. I mean, here's the thing with the game. Like the game is still going to be set up. The board is still the same in Pokemon because it's mm -hmm. not like they're changing the game itself. So yeah, yeah, no, it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. To, yeah sure. it makes sense to have all the same things that you need. But one of the things that I really loved is that it felt like the old Pokemon trading card game online UI had so much stuff that it didn't need and it slowed it down and it felt like I had to do multiple steps to get where I want to go. And it feels like this is the same thing, just simplified, of course, because they're trying to bring it to mobile, which is one of the other big deals with this, that it is coming to your smartphone. Mm -hmm. that they had to simplify this so that smartphones can actually handle it, yes. which I love because it's like when I'm playing this, I don't care that much about the actual like everything else going on around it. I just want to play the game. So to, yeah, as long as I can see the art of my cards, I can still play the game without worrying about a lag or anything like that. Yeah, then I'm honestly happy. So I love this change. I feel like this change is really, really helpful for the game. How about oh. you? No, I 100% agree with you. I do appreciate the much cleaner look as well. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing if they'll add anything on top of it. Because the, I will say the one thing I'm already a bit kind of, uh, I'm not going to say annoyed about, but I, I'm kind of weirded out about is the, uh, And it's also present in the on, current online game. Is this just, just a lot of like empty space, right? That's the biggest thing I dislike mm -hmm. about it. It's like, it's just so unoptimized. It feels like they could play something there and, you know, make use of it, right? Because I, I think it's also my gotcha, like my gotcha perspective as well, where, you know, you have gotcha games that have so much on your screen at all times, right? Um, yeah. So a clear, much like emptier look just kind of weirds me out, kind of. Uh, but no, I definitely like the updated UI for sure. The Let's talk a bit about this uh, point the that you referred Character customization? To. Yeah, let's talk about the character customizations. Yeah. Of course, there's a lot more customization on characters and something you pointed out as well. Apparently, I completely missed out on it, is that the avatars actually react uh, when, you know, yes. things happen. So you want to explain more on that? Because I just completely missed it, to be honest, when I was looking at the trailer. Sure. So basically, in the old uh, Pokemon trading card game online, the avatars were just kind of there. You could send messages. Uh, sometimes there were default messages that would go through. But here in the trailer, you can see when something good happens, they might kind of like have a little cheer. Their facial expressions are a lot more fluid. These characters feel more like actual characters. But yeah. beyond that as well, you have way more customization with a sliding scale on colors on you can have probably more hairstyles, clothes, things like that. But the big thing is that with this UI update that they did make the characters react, they made them more fluid and it really is fantastic. Uh, if you kind of look in the trailer, if you t check over in the like left hand side, whenever something happens in game, you'll see them actually react to it, both of them, which is really, really cool for me. Uh, obviously, like I said, I don't pay a ton of attention to that part of the game and it's not the necessary thing, but it is kind of a nice touch. No, I 100% agree with you on that one. Um, and I do like that it's light touch, like you said, it just adds an extra dimension to it. Not a major one, but an extra one nonetheless, and it's kind of nice. Um, let's talk a bit about the no trading thing. Now, I think we should talk about that mm -hmm. because obviously it's a major That's, feature. Yeah. It's a major feature in TCG Online. It's and It's my super favorite excellent. feature on TCG Online. <laughs> and I, have I love it. economics. It, it's great it's absolutely great you know i remember back in 2016 17 when i used to play it a lot more um going on a reddit post and trying to you know get cards and stuff like that you know it was well, great it was beyond great. that it's like it's rewarding because you can ch turn like let's say i buy one code card yeah. i can turn that over a month into a pretty decent collection exactly it's like yeah. it takes a lot of work uh and i i get 
why they're not mm -hmm. but at the same time i it does remove a big core part of the yeah. game but yeah. yeah i am I'll, okay with it just because of the way they let us buy the single card yeah i agree i think the biggest thing i was just gonna add there as well is that it's a it's it's not a new thing that pokemon is doing they've just taken an inspiration from other games as well you know uh um, magic arena from what i've been uh, what i know is doesn't have trading Hearthstone, as far as I know, doesn't have trading as well. I could be wrong on that one, but I know Magic Arena doesn't. Yeah, Magic Arena does. Um, you know, Duel Links, of course, doesn't. Uh, and then, of course, from uh, at least, you know, based on initial looks, because of the fact that Master Duel has in-app purchases, you're probably not going to get trading in that game either, which is the upcoming Yu-Gi-Oh! official rules game that's on all consoles, which we'll come on to in a second about consoles and what platforms Pokemon is available on. But... Yeah, it's just I'm not surprised that there's no trading. I think uh, I I will I am a bit disappointed, but again, it's kind of alleviated by the fact that you know it's you can just buy single cards instead and all of that jazz, right? I think that's the beauty of it at least. Um, but yeah, let's yeah. talk about about the platform. So of course this is available on PC and mobile. Um, you know, obviously the TCG Online was available on PC and tablets only, not even normal mobile phones. So obviously, yeah, which is always a big frustration. A big, big frustration. I 100% agree with you on that one. So at least there's a, a bit more accessibility here. However, you know, I wanted to point out with Master Duel releasing on nearly every console, right? It's literally on everything, including the Switch. Um, I think it's on the Switch as well. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, I could stand corrected on that. I'll have to double check just in a second when the I the comment section will tell us. And I mean, I can check right now. I, I, we don't need no comment section. They can tell us, but I wow, will check we're it myself. Wow, we're doing live. Okay. <laughs> but uh, no, what I was going to ask you was, is it a misstep from the Pokemon company to not put it on the Switch? Because we know they won't put it on the PlayStation or Xbox. We know that. But is it a misstep for them not to put it on the Switch? Honestly, 100%. Yes, it is. Uh, I think that if you're revamping this to be simple enough to put on mobile, you should be able to put it on the Switch, especially when... So many Pokemon players play their Pokemon games on Switch because that's all you release it on. So at yep. this point, like if you're playing the card game and you're specifically revamping it with the intention to release it on other platforms, it doesn't make sense to me why you wouldn't include Switch. It just doesn't. Like if you can make a simple for, simplified version for phones, you can make it for Switch. Yep. No, I 100% agree with you. Also, I just checked, by the way, Yu-Gi-Oh! is indeed on the Switch as well. So again, oh. another... Oh, no. Another a card game that's on Pokemon. A, a card game that's on the uh, Switch. So yeah, I have to agree. I mean, I I I don't know why they didn't do it on the Switch. I think it would have been great. You know, like how Unite Unite. Uh, I mean, Unite should have been on PC, but they put that on the Switch. Which fair enough. It it's done a great job on the Switch, of course, and it's coming on well, mobile. I feel like well, we'll right? still get it on PC eventually. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. and I agree. I, I do agree. You know, it, I feel like it's gonna come out on PC as well. I'm genuinely surprised the trading card game isn't on the Switch. Of course, it's where the main audience for Pokemon arguably is more than the PC and mobile. Of course, mobile less so because everybody has a mobile these days, a smartphone. So you know, I think that's fine. But PC versus Switch, I would prefer a Switch just because I, I well. As a Pokemon fan, you know, most people would have a Switch for it. But, hey, you know what? I'll still take it on the PC. I'm not complaining. It's not as if I'm saying it shouldn't have come out on the PC. I'm saying, I think out of the two, no, a of Switch course. would have been a bit smarter just because of their well, audience, I think. I, I will say if it didn't come out on the PC when the Pokemon trading card game online is already on the PC, yeah. I think that would have been a huge mistake. Yeah, that would have been another issue as well if it didn't come out on PC. But yeah, there's just a lot of different things about it, which is kind of weird to me. But I mean, hey, we're still getting it. Um, Just to reiterate, by the way, um, there is a mobile soft launch coming to Canada later this year and a global open bid on PC and Mac. We don't have any dates yet. Um, I assume by later this year means probably November or December. I, they would have probably given us a date if it was next month. Um, considering later this year means there's only like three months left, right? So I'd assume it's one of yeah. those two it, two months. I mean, it's available soon. So I within three months is my guess. Yeah, I agree. So yeah, I mean that's it. So I think those are all my points and my thoughts. I think I'm I'm still excited for it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm very very happy. No in-app purchases, uh, unlike you know other card games, which is good. And <clears throat> yeah, that's that, that pretty much that one, and potentially master deal. And on top of that, just being able to transfer everything from PCG Online to the new game, as well as keeping code cards, the battle pass without being paid. It looks good. Ranked as well. I'm very excited about trading cards. Is the only thing I'm a bit confused. Uh, uh, you know, un unfortunate, but I can understand why. But yeah, how do you feel? Final thoughts from you, Waffles. Yeah. 
ultimately i'm kind of in the same boat uh basically losing the trading part does suck for me but with all the things we're getting in a, in return for it i'm okay with it like being able to play this on phone first of all is huge and so like the fact that that's really one of the biggest reasons why i had to take a break and stuff because it's like you have to sit down you have to play it on the pc or you have to own a tablet but if you just have it on your phone i can commute and i can just play it the same way i can play dokkan or any other game that i want to play but the other big thing is the no in-app purchases and being able to just buy single cards is huge for me because like all the other trading card games that are on phones and stuff it feels like you have to pay to be able to win in that game yep. it feels like a lot of people will always get the best decks because they wail out and so it can be really frustrating and feel like you can't progress especially mm. for me dual links i played for a long time where it got to that point where it was like okay i have to buy the most recent packs a lot i have to have the most recent decks to be able to actually make game games and so it was stuff like that that makes you not want to keep playing but i feel like this was a really good choice for them to remove the in-app purchases and i think that it means that this will have staying power at least for me personally the audience can let us know how they feel about it in the comments down yeah. below but that is actually my final thought all right. Yeah, no, I 100% agree with you on that one. Well, yeah, let us know in the comment section. What do you guys think? Uh, which trading card game are you more excited for? Yu-Gi-Oh! or Pokemon? We'll put that question out there, I suppose. Oh, and Wait, uh, I have one final thought. Go for it. Comment section. Tell me how bad the Squirtle is on the page. It looks so bad to me. I hate it so much. Okay, please continue. <laughs> no, but yeah, no, I was just going to say. Let, me, let us know in the comment section. Which one are you guys more, most excited for? Yu-Gi-Oh!'s Master Duel coming out or this Pokemon TCG Live game? Even though TCG Live just is basically a continuation of online. But Master Duel being a new game, which one are you more excited for? But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel for more content. We will be keeping you guys up to date with all the information we get. And Waffles... Thank you for joining us, and uh, yeah. I'm glad to be here to do this news. But until the next video, we'll see you guys next time. Take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.